Zoning is an integral part of understanding the value of real estate. Every single piece of property in the United States has a zoning classification. The video that is following is my meeting with the Knoxville Planning Commission in reference to changing the density on a piece of residential property, slightly less than one acre in size. It should be informative because the meeting after this is the one with the city council, which is the legislative body that must approve a rezoning. This will be the same for every city in America. No matter where you live, you'll follow this process. This is my presentation at the Knoxville Planning Commission meeting, March the 12th. Thank you very much. Agenda item number 13. The applicant is Victor Jernigan. The location is the north side of Oak Grove Lane, east of Lions View Pike. The approximate size of the tract is 0.95 acres. The present zoning is RN1, single family residential neighborhood. The zoning requested is RN2, single family residential neighborhood. The existing land use is single family residential. And the staff recommendation is to approve RN2 zoning because it is consistent with the West City Sector Plan designation of LDR, low density residential land use classification for this property. Is the applicant present? Is there opposition? Sir, do you want to go first or the opposition? No, I'll yield to my opposition. Thank you. Ma'am? Uh, no, I would defer. Ma'am, ma'am, I'm sorry. That, he's the applicant and he has the option to speak first or defer. Uh, the reason I request that he go first is we just received information this morning. Can you, can you give us... My name is Mary English, 810 Oak Grove Lane. Thank you. Uh, there was new information that arrived... For me, I only saw it at 12.30 this morning, this afternoon. Um, and so I, it would be very helpful if the applicant would go first. I could give my argument, but then I would ask for time after he speaks. Well, you could do that. You could okay. give your argument and reserve some time, and then you will be able to speak after him. Okay, that sounds fine. Uh, I need to get my material, sorry. So what we're concerned about, and the, all of the commissioners received a letter from me, uh, along with my other two neighbors, who we, the three of us own the other houses on Oak Grove Lane. Uh, we've all lived there for more than 30 years. And uh, it's, we are not opposed to what Mr. Jorgen, Jer, Jerdigan has proposed initially in terms of keeping the existing house and adding a couple of other houses there. That would be within his right as RN1, even with the 10,000 square feet requirement with, the, with recode. Um, but we are concerned if RN2 is granted or is recommended by the Planning Commission and then it will go to City Council, we're concerned that this opens up the possibility of having much greater density than that parcel can bear, both because of the nature of the parcel itself and because of the narrowness of the road, also because of the difficulty of getting on and off Oak Grove Lane onto Lions View. The fact that it is part of LDR, LDR sector zone is fine, but that, that is only one factor among many that need to be taken into consideration. Uh, with that, I would like to hand out, if I have time, mm -hmm. um, I'd like to hand out some material that I prepared that does not show Mr. Jernigan's site plan for the property, but does show the property in relation to the rest of the neighborhood. Okay, we, we will uh, pause the clock while you uh, get the materials to Thank you. Mr. Breshko. Uh, this is for planning director and staff. This is 
This is for the Planning Commission. And yeah, Mr. Jordan. Yeah. So, once they've all got the yeah, yeah let, let's wait okay. till we all have something in hand. Okay, thanks. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, so our objections uh, included the topography that would lead to runoff, uh, as well as the narrowness of the road, which, with the possibility of increased traffic and the difficulty of negotiating on Oak Grove Lane and getting on and off Oak Grove Lane. Uh, you will see in the in the first page the topography. The site is outlined in black. So there is a a total uh, decline of more than 20 feet. If you look at from the lower left uh, corner to the upper right corner, those total line, they basically it goes from 926 um, elevation down to under it to below uh, 920, right, at, right about at 906 elevation. So that is a significant drop, and uh, we are concerned that, particularly if it was built out to our end to the possibilities there, you could have uh, probably up to eight dwelling units on the property, which would lead to a lot of, of uh, surface runoff. Um, and in addition, a lot of traffic. Uh, if you look at the second page, this is a photo that I took this morning. It shows how dry, how um, narrow the road is. It also shows the effect of having parking along the street with a car pulling out. So those are some of our concerns, as, as well as for us, the character of our street and the fact that uh, RN2 has also, it's been added to the neighborhood, to the larger neighborhood with Recode. So uh, I, I will defer to. Okay, thank you, Ms. English. Right. Mr. Jernigan. Yours. Victor Jernigan, 229 Sherway Road, Knoxville 37923. Um, uh, I certainly appreciate the staff's input into this particular zoning. I met with, um, this is an unusual piece of property in that it's an acre of land in one of the most desirable residential areas in Knoxville. And as I approached the, the zoning originally, you can see that the adjoining property uh, became RN6 under the recode process. And the RN6, this property effectively is, um, could be bisected by an RN6 line. And the original goal, quite seriously, was to look at uh, developing uh, housing to create a diversity of opportunity in this particular zip code. Uh, this is across from Lakeshore Park. It's next to the Veterans Cemetery. It's a phenomenal opportunity for people who are downsizing out of some of the larger homes in Westmoreland and for young professionals who can't afford to live in some of the other neighborhoods that adjoin this property. And so it, as I was looking at the plan originally, we looked at bisecting the property with an RN6 zone, leaving a single family house uh, next to the other properties, and then building some townhomes uh, sort of along the what would be the RN6 half of the property. After Talking um, with Elsbeth and the neighbors and talking with staff, what the, the, the neighbors are legitimately concerned, they have lived there forever. They have beautiful homes. <laughs> they, I mean, uh, the landscaping, the way in which they've done additions to their homes is just really excellent. 
And so um, we, uh, they were nice enough to have a meeting at uh, their house uh, December the 18th at Elsbeth's house. And we talked about the range of options which I was looking at doing, one of which was to develop the property into um, the, my least desirable option would be to develop it into four lots, but that I would be happy to develop it into four lots if that would make them satisfied with the project. And so um, we, I, I had the conversation with staff as to uh, thoughts about being able to get this done and looked at the design plans. And since, uh, quite seriously, since October of last year, have been working on different designs and different ideas for the plans. I had originally promised uh, Elsbeth uh, and Maribeth that I would have their plans back by the middle of February. Unfortunately, the architects and my schedule didn't quite get worked out and we didn't get plans back that I was satisfied with until uh, earlier this week. I have a copy of a preliminary site plan showing four lots and an elevation and the fo footprint of the house that we are going to be using. And I can, pa I only unfortunately have one copy, but I'd be happy to pass this around so you can see that we're working through the process right now. In, in the meeting we had on uh, December 18th, I um, uh, understand their concerns as far as traffic, as far as queuing of uh, people on and off the street, uh, and uh, issues that are certainly important, uh, stormwater managing the control. So we're looking at using um, pavers for the, it's, it's a short road, uh, uh, be a private road, but using pavers and other uh, benefits of the way in which the properties can be developed under the recode process to create some real flexibility. The plans that we that are going around are what I call proof of concept. There are four lots. You could build four of those houses that we have attached. That particular house has been um, modified a couple of times, but we're sort of mimicking um, the um, uh, some developments that uh, uh, show um, beautifully beautifully designed homes uh, with well landscape lots with close proximity to each other. The people who will be living in this neighborhood, in general, have what I refer to as time flexibility. Um, this will not be inexpensive housing. And the, the fact that um, there, is, there is definitely traffic on Lion's View, there's no question about that from time to time, but the issue gets to be that uh, we view the, the majority of the people who will live uh, in these houses will have flexibility of scheduling, just as these ladies have flexibility of scheduling, that they don't have to be somewhere at a specific time every single day. And so the traffic issue for coming and going will be um, substantially mitigated coming off of this property. But additionally, uh, Brakeville Nursing Home, which has um, 250, 200 cars coming and going every day, uh, also accesses this, this road. Uh, and doesn't appear to have created any additional problem in all the years that it's been there. So it is something that we're aware of, but we're working for it in the planning process. One of the issues that we had with the site plan when we were working through was to be sure that the site plan, we wanted to save the house. The house was, uh, it would have been easy to tear the house down. Uh, we actually maybe, would have been, it would have been a much easier process, to, candidly, to have torn the house down. Mr. Jernigan, your time's up. Do you have just a little bit to finish up? I do, just one last thing. Yep. I, I very much appreciate the input from the neighbors. I've made every effort to meet with them and keep them informed. The plan is in uh, keeping with what the staff has recommended, and I do uh, ask you to support the staff recommendation to change uh, the zone to an R2 zone. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Ms. Ms. English, you have just a little bit of time. If I could, madam. Yes. share the uh, usual uh, statement that at a rezoning, the plans that are presented cannot be considered. What you have to consider is all the uh, uses permitted under the proposed zoning. The, the development scenario identified by Mr. Jernigan as a subdivision would come back to the uh, Planning Commission for if, if that's in his uh, intent, come back before the Commission for the review is a concept plan and use on review. If Mr. Jernigan decided to do duplexes, that would be a special use and would be reviewed by the Planning Commission. So although you can't consider those plans at this point, if the rezoning is approved as the development moves forward, there would be an opportunity to review the plans for the development. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, Ms. English? Uh, I have three quick points. 
The first is that all of the RN6 is, as Mr. Jernigan said, the nursing home that's down below. It used to be Breakbill. It is now Westmoreland. Uh, the only reason that it is RN6 is that is the zoning for a residential care facility under the new code. So, uh, so it, I regard it as irrelevant to what happens up the hill, literally up the hill. Gotcha. Okay. Second, uh, there is no need for RN2 if Mr. Jernigan wishes to do the four houses that he's proposing. He could do, as I think I mentioned, two additional as of right. He could get variances, most likely easier to get variances, to achieve the, four, the additional fourth house. Okay. And then finally, the, he uh, is less familiar with the, the parking problems and more specifically the exit problems from Breakbill than we are. We often have to be careful about when we come down the road, cars don't look up the road and there are accidents waiting to happen. Thank you, thank you. We're going one to- comment, oh, One go comment, one comment. Uh, Ms. English said that the, Mr. Jernigan would likely be able to get variances. The standard for obtaining a variance is a hardship. Identifying a hardship when you're creating a new development is challenging when there are no physical characteristics of the property that would warrant that. So I would uh, caution, I, add a caution to that statement. Uh, I would add that topography is mentioned as a hardship in the definition. For existing lots. All right, uh, Commissioner Roth. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Ms. Alverson, can you, for the sake of the people involved in this conversation, just kind of give us a brief overview of RN1 and RN2? Yes. Um, let's see. I'll start by reading the description in the new zoning ordinance um, for RN1 there and versus RN2. They're both... Uh, characterized as single-family residential neighborhood zoning districts. Um, RN1 uh, is intended to accommodate traditional low-density residential neighborhoods in the city of Knoxville, exhibiting a predominant development pattern of single-family homes on relatively large lots with generous setbacks. Two-family dwellings may also be allowed by special use approval, and limited non-residential uses that are compatible with the character of the district may also be permitted. RN2 um, is also characterized as a low density single family residential uh, development area uh, on relatively smaller lots with smaller setbacks within the city of Knoxville. Two family dwellings may also be allowed by special use approval and limited non-residential uses that are compatible with the character of the district may also be permitted. Uh, when it comes to dimensional standards for the two districts, under RN1, the minimum lot size for a single family lot is 10,000 square feet. Under RN2, the minimum lot size for a single family lot is 5,000 square feet. Uh, under RN2, uh, under special use review, as Mr. Green noted, uh, duplex or two family dwelling, the minimum lot size is 15,000 square feet. Under RN2, the minimum lot size for a duplex or two family dwelling is 10,000 square feet. So we're basically looking at the square footage of the lot is the big difference between the two zones. And, and the setbacks. Thank you. Commissioner Graff. Yes, I just wanted to make a comment uh, about the zoning that what is being shown may not be what's being built, but Victor Jarnigan has been before this commission for at least 30 years at least, and I've never heard the first negative word on anything that he's done in Knoxville. And if he didn't build this exact house, it would be something comparable and it would be nice. And I just feel that way, and I don't know him personally, but he's appeared here for more than 30 years. Thank you for that. Uh, Commissioner Eason? <laughs> I think staff presented a comparison of the number of single family houses and the number of duplexes. Could you repeat that for me? Sure. Um, yeah, just in a quick estimate of potential density uh, based on minimum lot sizes. If it were RN1 and you did all single family lots at at least 10,000 square feet, since the lot itself is about 
uh, 42,000 um, square feet, they could potentially fit four lots on the property for single family residential under RN1. And in RN2, since the minimum lot size is 5,000 square feet, they could potentially fit probably up to eight uh, dwelling, or eight lots for single family residential dwelling. Under uh, duplex as special use, uh, which would be for both RN1 and RN2, the RN1, they could potentially have uh, three 15,000 square feet lots for duplexes, and under the RN2, they could potentially have up to four uh, duplex lots of 10,000 square feet. So, and just for clarification, the, the site plan that came past us, that had four lots, didn't it? Mm -hmm. And so you could do what you wanted to do with, with the current zoning. Mm -mm. No. 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 The, so the lots are below 10,000 feet. Yes. So they, the issue on in the site plan that we sent around um, is in the RN2 zone, those, we can get those lots on those houses without, there's a, um, a, we're looking to make this a really attractive development and work within the guidelines of what the neighbors would like to have. And it also works out to be a nice, pro, nice development. But with, with, when you look at where the road detention, the, uh, the road is going to be laid out to create a buffer that exists today. There's a, um, an over, what I would call an overgrown uh, hedge, but it's a, uh, it's a nice wooded, in the spring and summer, it's a really nice little screen area. And so we're staying off of that property. And so we're using, creating a little more buffer, using uh, some design ideas that make it possible to build the four houses. We haven't, and again, this is just a, and Mr. Green, is, and, and the zoning goes with the land, it's not with me, I understand that perfectly, and I very much appreciate the, the kind words, Mr. Graff. It's, the situation is that we're looking to show the, our good intent to develop the property in the way that I have agreed with them. I have an email from them in January saying that they would support the four lots, and we've been moving forward with getting it done to be able to get it laid out. And so to get it laid out, we needed the surveyors, and if everybody's tried to get a surveying crew, it's been a little hard in the rain here. Uh, so we're, we, we literally have just got it all put together just in the last few days. And so we think that this, it's gonna require some additional tweaking. It's gonna look different when we bring it into plan, but it won't look a lot different than what I presented. It'll be four, a four lot subdivision. Commissioner Clancy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd like to thank the neighborhood and Mr. Jernigan. We can't consider any of that, Victor, um, uh, but I'd like to make a motion that we approve RN2, Single Family Residential Neighborhood Zoning District, because it's consistent with the West City Sector Plan. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Clancy, a second by Commissioner Roth to approve the RN2. See no, um, Mr. Jernigan, did you have something else you wanted no, to say? No, nothing. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Uh, Commissioner Eason? I just, before we vote, I wanted to say that I appreciate what, what's being proposed, but since the zoning goes with the property, I'm afraid of the density that could come with, some, with another development. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? No. no. We have three opposed. Who are the three opposed? Hill, Eason, Toker. Okay.